close there by a second, right? So, all right, guys, if you were having trouble with this before, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to factor, right? And you guys remember how to factor, hopefully, with the problems, right? When we factor, let's like, take a look at the number 8. When we said factor the number 8, what we did is we broke it down as the multiplication of your prime numbers, which is called prime factorization. So if I look at number 8, if I look at number 8, if I want to break it down into its factors, I want to break it down to what numbers divide into 8. And that's what we were talking about that last problem. 8 can be broken down into 4 times 2, right? But remember, we want to break it down to all the factors. So here, I can, is 4 a prime number? No. So you can break it down again. Now, you can see that 8 has been factored into a product of all of its prime factors. Does everybody see that? Okay. So, there's shortcuts to doing this. I'm going to show you the long way so you guys can see how to do this problem. The next thing also I want to tell you guys one thing is a cubed. a cubed is not prime. a cubed can be broken down. First of all, a cubed can be divided by a squared. You say what? How do you divide? Remember when we divide a number by another number with exponents, we subtract the exponents. Right? So I can say a squared times a is a cubed, and then I can break down a squared again. That's not a prime number as well. That means a times a times a. So when we have variables, we want to break them down to their prime number, okay, or the prime variable. So let's look at 10. Let's look at all these numbers, and let's break them down to the prime factorization. Hopefully by explaining this, this might understand how we're going to do the shorthand method. So if I need to break down 10, what number goes into 10 that I can use? Five. Right? So, be, so if you take your 5, you divide 10 into 5, you're going to add the other factor is what? 2. 2. So I can write 10 as the product of 5 times 2. Right? And that's what a lot of you guys are mixing. When I divided out the 2, remember that last problem? That's why it was 2 times what your answer was, right? When you divided it in. Now I have h cubed. How can I rewrite h cubed as a product of its factors? That's going to be what? Uh, h, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, you could do the h squared, but we can just factor that into times h times h times h. n cubed is going to be n times n times n, right? So that's one big term. It's a lot, right? Let's look at the next one. Is, is 2, is that a prime number? Yes, so we can't factor that anymore, can we? No. So I'm going to say minus 2. Is h prime? Yes. Yes, it is. Can't divide h into anything. And n squared, that's not prime. We can write that as what? H times n times n. Am I going to have a loss to anybody so far? No. Nope. I'm done? Got it? No? Okay. So... The next one is 14. Is 14 a prime number? No. No, no we can rewrite that as what? 7 times 2. 7 times 2, very good. And then h and n, right? Because those are obviously primes we talked about. So when we are, so right now we have three terms that I just factored out. So when I say factoring, what I mean is take out everything that they have in common. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide out what everything they have in common. So let's first take out the numbers. What number do they have in common? Two. Two, right? So, I'm sorry. Take out the largest amount that they have in common. So the largest number that they have in common is a two. So I'm going to factor out a two. So what we do is we kind of like divide out by a two. Okay, so if I divide by two, what's two divided by two? That cancels out, right? Yes. What do you mean the largest? Do you mean which one has the most numbers or like the highest number? The highest number that can divide into all of those. The highest number that they all share. The highest number that these all share is a 2. Yes? Um, when you're doing that, are you going to take out the 2 and the h and the n? Now we're going to look at the h's and the n's. Okay? So let's think about it. How many h's do they all share? What is one? The 1, right? This one has 3 h's, but this one only has 1. And this one only has one. So the most amount of H's I can take out is one. Does that make sense? 
right? You can't take more than one H away from there. There's only one H there. If you try taking away two, there's not, there's not two to take away. Then let's look at the ends. What's the most amount of ends we can take out? Two. Or one. One, right? This, I know this one has a lot, but this one has two, but this one only has one. So you can only take out the greatest that they all share. So what I'm doing is I'm actually dividing each one of my terms by my greatest common factor. So like a 2 divided by 2, h divided by h, n divided by n. 2, 2, h, h, n, n. 2, 2, h, h, n, n. So what I did was when I divide by one number, I divided out at 2, h, n. Now, what is my result left over? Because remember, you multiply your factors. Yes? Uh, 5, h squared, n squared, I mean, n cubed. No, it's all the dates cancel out. Okay, so you have n squared, yep. Minus n seven. That's it. That's it. That's it. Very good. Does that kind of make sense what we did? That's it. Huh?